Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another silly car build. My vehicle today is the Porsche 550 Spider. Now you may recognize this car. This is the one that uh, went faster than the McLaren F1. Using the same amount of horsepower, this got to 252 miles an hour. That is an awful lot of speed using 627 horsepower. And I was kind of curious just how fast it would go when it's fully maxed and how it would drive around a circuit when it has that much power. The car, as it's, uh, yes, it's, it's, as it's the one that I use, does have some upgrades, all, or quite a lot of upgrades already installed on it. We are going to start by putting some aero on the vehicle. All of the vehicles have been run with it as it's going to try and make it around a track. This is going to be rather important. You can tell by the fact that it jumped the P up by about 20. That, uh, yeah, it is uh, pretty important. Try and give me uh, a hope in hell of keeping this car under control, possibly-ish. It's uh, incredibly lightweight and it's going to have a tremendous amount of power. So you can imagine how it's going to go. As far as the tyres, well, we are going to be on some nice race tyres, but we don't have very big ones. Two, three, five at the rear. They're pretty damn small tyres for a car that's going to be dealing with an awful lot of horsepower. Uh, the fronts are even smaller, two 1.5s on the front here. Yes, the car is very small itself and very light. However, still, they are not particularly big tyres to deal with so much power. Could be quite twitchy when it comes to dealing with a, a wet circuit. Uh, I think there's bits and pieces of these installed. Might as well go through and uh, put the rest on. I did use the race gearbox and the uh, the race diff. Uh, often very important on these classic cars. Um, because, yeah, they like to spin one wheel. So, useful upgrade, the uh, race diff, I think pretty sure we've got all of these parts on but shall just check and indeed we do now for the engine bits and pieces some of these parts are already on it was all about trying to find the balance that got to the the right horsepower figure this should be pretty damn fast though in a straight line once i am uh, once i am done with it because it is going to have significantly more horsepower. It's got the uh, three liter flat six in the car. Twin turbocharged, uh, 826 horsepower. That's a pretty big jump from the uh, 620 that I drove with it last time. Uh, the intercooler will add some weight, but does add another 35 horsepower to 861. And the oil and cooling is already on the car. So that's quite a lot of power, quite a lot of torque in an incredibly light vehicle with tiny tires that I'm now going to try and drive around a very tight twisty racetrack. And that circuit would be the Virginia International Raceway where the Porsche will have five laps in an attempt to go as fast as possible. A current leader, the Bentley Continental GT, has a lap time of 108.4 although that is unlikely to uh, be toppled today. The Bentley was a mighty composed, incredibly powerful four-wheel drive car. While yes, it was heavy, it was a very nice driving car. This may well have a far better power to weight ratio. Probably would out-accelerate the Bentley once it's got its power down, but power delivery on this very wet surface is uh, likely to be problematic for the Porsche. That uphill section is not going to be fun. The uphill section is really not going to be fun in this car. It's uh, sort of full racing speeds. Oh, please get turned, please get turned, please get turned. Eventually, we'll make it around these corners. This is a nasty circuit, this one. This is probably one of the, the most most demanding circuits, certainly uh, the tracks that can be driven in the rain. This is one of the toughest because of some very slow, tight corners early on, and there are still a couple of uh, faster bits later in the lap of that uh, you need some decent, oh god, some decent grip for to carry any speed around. It's a demanding place. That is, uh, that is for sure. This turn here, probably the nastiest of the lot. I really don't like that corner. It's such a tough one to get right. Not being a particularly good opening lap from the Porsche. I've been missing apexes all over the place. But a little bit of uh, under... I think we just have a lack of grip more than understeer, to be honest. It's... it's just not got the grip. Power delivery. Oh, I'm trying to be careful and not spin the wheels. It's almost working. Can we get full throttle in sick? Oh god, that's scary. 186 miles an hour before we jump on the brakes. We're not stopping. 
Oh, ugh. that's a bit close. Okay, could have been a bit closer. Um, okay, we have a lot of speed. That is a new record for speed down here. However, it did not get stopped. Nowhere near got stopped either for that, <laughs> for that matter. So we're going to have to go on the brakes earlier. It does not actually get slowed down very well, this car. Ooh. Careful, yeah, and then we're gonna get a bit of oversteer. Yeah, we do not really stop for turn one. We have the same issues that lots of cars have had with these slow corners, just struggling to get the front end turned in, struggling to carry quarter speed. And then when you do get the front end turned in, you struggle to put any power down out of the corner because, well, there's so much power trying to escape onto such a wet surface. And this is really not helped by the tiny tires that we have on the back of the Porsche. Good news though for the car is it's not snappy oversteery. Not like I was kind of expecting it to be. Things like the Maserati birdcage that went around Brands Hatch, that thing was horribly, horribly snappy and uh, wanted to kill you pretty much all of the time. This, you know, it spins the wheels up and it doesn't take much to get it sideways, but it's not so snappy. It's a lot more manageable in here, which is nice. I can, I can deal with that a bit better. Right, we're trying to, all oh, those bumps are going to be horrible. We're, bit earlier under brakes. Oh, ooh, okay, that's a bit spot on that. <laughs> I might have turned in a fraction too soon. Yeah, we do not want to break any later than that uh, up into that first corner. It's, um, yeah, it's such a tough kind of stopping, stopping area. The problems, I never foresaw the problems. When I selected this as a track to be used in this series, I never foresaw the problems with the, the uphill bumpy section. In a lot of cars, you don't notice it, certainly in the Maserati that was used as the benchmark, the, uh, the race car, and a lot of the early vehicles, the Mercury Coupe, etc., didn't have such problems coming up that hill. It is deceptively bumpy, and in a car like this that has so little grip, you hit the bumps at 170 miles an hour, and naturally the car just gets flung off the track or gets flung sideways. So that is a really vicious uh, part of the circuit that some cars just don't even notice it, but in a vehicle like this, you've got to be really careful. So actually trying to get to full throttle in this vehicle is quite difficult around this track, not only because of the wheel spin, but by the time you can get to full throttle, which is here, it wants to burst into wheel spin up the hill. <laughs> that is bloody terrifying. Okay, I got on the brakes a little early into turn one, but at least we actually got it stopped neatly. We were under control coming into the uh, first corner. I have got to say, I am quite impressed by this Porsche. I was expecting it to be not quite undrivable, but combine such tiny tyres with such power output, and again, such huge power to weight ratio here, this could be a lot worse. Could be a hell of a lot worse. Actually, through these sections, yes, we lack, we lack grip. We have quite a bit of understeer, and then on power oversteer, as you would expect. However, it could be a hell of a lot worse. It could be a lot snappier. It could be a lot more difficult to drive. Brakes aren't great, but uh, aside from that, I'm pretty impressed with the way that uh, the 550 drives. It also helps this being mid-engined as opposed to the other classic Porsche I drove being rear-engined. The front of the car isn't lifting up. It's not wanting to do a wheelie constantly. The uh, 356, is it? I can never remember the name. Um, yeah, that was quite a pain in the ass to drive when it was constantly wanting to wheelie. This thing, we don't have that problem with. But we do still have an overall lack of grip. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I thought I braked a fraction too early there. I was a little let off all the brake in the braking zone, and then I thought I'd completely screwed it all up. But we were okay on the run into turn one. We found a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, like the, the, the Caterham was a lot di more difficult to drive than this. That was a lot snappier, uh, a lot more prone to wanting to fling you off into the scenery than, than this car is, and that's not quite what I was expecting. I may have clipped the uh, look back button by accident, never mind. We somehow survi <laughs> survived that. Okay, try and put that power down. We're actually going quite quickly on this lap around, if we can finish off. The, uh, the lap neatly. Oh no, we've got it running a little wide through there with some understeer. I thought I got it slowed for that corner enough. I had not. Now we chuck it into this uh, final turn. There is a big puddle on the inside. Uh, it doesn't really affect the cars too much though, the puddle down there, so not too worried about that one. Try and get the power down on the run towards the line. Oh, we found a lot of time on that final lap. I don't know where that lot came from. <laughs> okay. I don't know where I found a second on that last lap, and I know I was a little wide 
through that kind of third to last corner bit out over that way somewhere. I was a little wide. I got a little bit of understeer. Carted the car wide. I was not expecting that speed from the Porsche. We shall have some celebratory donuts indeed for that one. That was some that was some good going actually. Yeah, it's not an easy car to drive. The power delivery is brutal. It will spin its wheels and it doesn't like the crests and the bumps on the run up towards the uh, the turn one. As you might expect, a small light car to have issues there. However, it's actually pretty nimble through the corners. It does a pretty good job of changing direction and it hasn't got the brutal, kind of the brutal scary power delivery of the Caterham or the Jaguar D-Type for, um, for, for that point. It's just a bit better. That's, that's quick quick lap time. It goes second place on the leaderboard. Beats the Dodge Charger, Hellcat, the Honda S2000, the Chrysler's Rocket. And that's in a car that I thought was going to be bonkers and barely controllable. You know, down with the Jaguar D-Type and the Caterham. I thought that was how it was going to drive. It simply doesn't. The brakes are a tad scary in places, but that's really very good going. Well, the area I thought the Porsche might struggle on is actually pretty good. Now to the area where the Porsche is likely to be pretty damn impressive. And that is the speed run. Let's hope we don't have a reversal there. And that of course means bringing the Porsche to Le Mans. Now the real question is, can the 550 Spyder go quicker than the Jaguar D-Type? It has a lot less power, this car. We're down about three, 300 horsepower on the Jag D-Type. I would be quite surprised if it could but it is likely to be close. We saw it go faster than the Jaguar uh, when both cars had no more than 627 horsepower. In fact, the Porsche had 623. So this thing is mighty fast in a straight line, but can it beat 271 miles an hour? Now, the conditions exactly the same between the vehicles. Both of them were running the same way down the Le Mans straight. Both of the cars had aero with the with much downforce removed as we as i can do to them it looks like the d type is going to uh, be the victor here 627 uh 267 sorry i can i can number <laughs> um i don't think we're going to be able to beat that d type i think what we what we're seeing here is a case of the porsche is simply going to run out of power to keep propelling it forward the Jaguar had 1,200, which is a stupendous amount. This has got less than... That is, the Jaguar's got over 900 horsepower more than this. This is under 900 horsepower. So there is a considerable power difference between the vehicles. Now, the Porsche, obviously slightly better at cutting through the air since it got to a higher top speed with the same horsepower as the Jaguar, but we simply don't have the horsepower to keep accelerating it when we get up to these really high speeds. And that is perhaps that is to be expected, really. You need, once you get up to six, uh, 260 odd miles an hour, um, you need more and more and more power to keep going because it gets more and more difficult to uh, accelerate away. And the Porsche has just not quite got enough power to uh, get it up to the uh, the same giddy speeds. And we did get a little bit of wheeling. Wasn't expecting that. It is a mighty fast, up to 200 miles an hour before we hit the corner. 230 as we go flying down this uh, this straight. It is mighty quick up to 240, up to 250. That's the speed it achieved with uh, 623 horsepower. We have surpassed that as we get up to 260 miles an hour, but we're starting to run out of power to keep propelling the car through the air. 264 miles an hour as we hit the corner. That is a huge jump. <laughs> that is by far the biggest jump we have had a car do. That is incredible. Wow. <laughs> I am astounded at the airtime we got there. That is mighty impressive from the bone that the the other Porsche did some impressive stuff. The other classic Porsche did some impressive kind of bouncing and wibbling down there, but uh, nothing has quite got the airtime that the 550 did. Almost kept it out of the wall as well. Almost stopped it from uh, from ending up in the fence. We did have a little bit of a scrape, but uh, <laughs> considering it was 260 miles an hour, we got launched in the air. That little bit of a scrape is uh, pretty good going. 
in the end, the 550 just doesn't quite have the power to compete with the, the Jaguar D-Type in terms of straight line speed. Perhaps not too surprised by that. I would love to be able to put the V12 engine in this. The 1,200 horsepower engine inside this car would be interesting and terrifying and fantastic all at the same time. Unfortunately, this is the most powerful engine that we can put in the in the 550. Still, though, 264 miles an hour is not that bad whatsoever. It puts the Porsche into third place on our leaderboard. The Jaguar D-Type still remains the, the fastest car. The Ferrari 250 LM in second place. Again, that was another car with the 1,200 horsepower V12. So the Porsche going into third is, uh, yeah, pretty damn good going for... <laughs> for this vehicle. It beats the Chrysler's Rocket, the Lotus 11, the Porsche Carrera GT, BMW 1M. Again, that 1M had the uh, huge amount of power. The Carrera GT, in fact, has the most powerful engine here. Uh, so, yeah, to have uh, to have gone as, as quick as it did, that is certainly not too shabby for the Porsche. And a mighty jump as well. The more impressive thing, though, is its ability to contain all of its power and to be drivable around a wet circuit. Wasn't expecting that at all from this car. However, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.